Yes, I'm, for, I'm just going to refresh my screen. Uh, I'm, Amal, if you could perhaps just introduce yourself to our global yeah. audience while I just refresh my screen. Yes, okay. Um, so my name is Amal Miftah. I'm uh, 25 years old. I've been making films for a couple of years now, um, maybe eight years. Uh, I started in high school. Um, and uh, and since then, I've just kind of fallen in love with filmmaking. Uh, I've been making uh, all sorts of films from documentary uh, to fiction. Uh, started with short films because um, that was kind of the easier route. Uh, started making stuff on my own and, and then kind of now um, working on uh, bigger projects. I'm working right now on a feature documentary and I a couple of years ago, I finished, um, maybe a year or two ago, I, I finished working on Shab, which is like a short fiction with, with Ben. So um, thank you very much, Amal. And uh, we're going to hear some more from you in a minute. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, I'm just going to share my screen. And with the wonders of technology, um, I'm going to pass hand over to my esteemed colleague Abdullah Al Muslim. Can everyone see this now? Can you see this, uh, Amal? I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So over to you, Abdullah, to introduce. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I am delighted to welcome you today's to today's workshop on the power of media and film in national and national building. Um, in which we will explore a film as a tool, advocacy and change. Through cinema, young people can better understand the world, uh, our history and the time we live in and gain new perspectives. <clears throat> film is the most important art uh, form in the 21st century. It is the medium, uh, it's the medium for information and awareness and uh, that extends for beyond the, its orig uh, original premise of entertainment, storytelling. From the very ancient time, it's all about the power of inspire people to make their lives better. It's fascinating audience through decades and film and evolved from highly exp ex expressive silent productions to films we know, we know now. With, techno with techno technological evolution uh, and change in youth culture, film took on a different role in the 1960s. For the first time, film also became a powerful tool for communication and transforma uh, tra transformative, uh, transformative media that could affect us on a very personal level. There were, uh, there were no longer stories to in uh, entertain, but uh, took a new power to educate and inform to influence the public perce uh, perception and sentimental, and ultimately to make us look at the world in a new, different way. Today's film, uh, today, film is a window to the world. It often brings us a face to face with important re uh, realities and serve uh, as a call to action. Global movement and uh, trans, uh, transcribed through images now, informing people across the world about common issues and help unite us under one cause. Today, film are a tool of self-expression, advocacy, and oftentimes youth empowerment. Qatar niche uh, film industry experienced incredible growth in, in, uh, over the last decade. For the past 10 years, the Doha Film Institute has developed robust ecosystem to support Qatari, Qatari and Arab film talent and help amplify their voices and take our stories to the world. From financing, from financing, uh, from financing support to training and development and exhib uh, exhibition platform of uh, exhibiting platforms of Ajial, Qumra, and DFI Yeram Cinema, we have developed our programs with storytelling in focus from Qatar and beyond, to truly unlock the potential of Arab talent and cinema. We are proud to have, a, we are proud to have collaborated with many uh, bold new voices from the region and beyond. 
develop, to develop support world to develop and support the world cinema while uh, fostering cultural diversity. The by Naji Abu Nawar, a DFI supported film, put the spotlight on the region and the Arab talents in 2014. It captured a, a pivotal movement in our region's history that was on the birth of massive change, and it was appreciated uh, widely for the for its honest and captivating de defective in our lives and our struggles. Powerful stories from the Arab world, such as Nadine Labeke's Kafar Nahum, supported by the Institute, gaining acclaimed in, ch in challenging markets in, like China, show, uh, showcasing the phenomenal potential of the Arab films in our stories. It told, uh, it told with a convincing, uh, it, to it was told with conv conviction and honesty. It gives me great pride to see young talents from Qatar emerge as creative leaders who went to tell local stories that carry a global footprint. Emerging talents such as Amal Muftah, AJ Althani, Jasim al Ramehi, Aisha al Jada, Majid al Ramehi, and Nof al Salati, among many others, we are proudly representing, uh, representing our nation and the, in the world stage through, stories, through, through their stories. We have an opportunity to balance global storytelling, clear mis misconceptions, and bring people together. We witness the transformation of uh, the uh, trans tra transform transformative power of film two years ago through the onset of the unjust blockade. At the time, emerging creative cameras together to create 96 incredible art projects that specifically countered fake news uh, cultivated by uh, the Qatari uh, by the, our adverts at the time. I think when you came from this part of the world you feel representatively uh, to, your, uh, to your regions. Each of us have the power to contribute, create, and unlock a bright future, grounding in compassion and con uh, cooperation. More than even uh, before, films are catalysts for change, and each one uh, of us can be an act active contributor to that change. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Um, so you can see, everyone, that our mission uh, at DFI is, is you know, multi-dimensional um, and expands funding, creative, technical development, festivals, and um, you know, also coming up later this year, we have the Ajal Youth Film Festival which is a wonderful platform and very appropriate for this conference um, because it's all aimed uh, at the development and the, the empowerment of young people to understand film on a deeper level. You know, it's, it's not really enough to just go to the cinema and eat popcorn. Um, film can be a very powerful tool, as I mentioned earlier. And the reason that I wanted to invite uh, Amal Al-Mufta to join us is because I've had the privilege of working years now. And Amal takes film uh, <clears throat> incredibly seriously, but also with a very poetic, light touch. And I wonder, I thought we could just jump into some questions and go through Amal's career. Um, and also because we have this uh, question, um, you know, this message board here, I will try and take a couple of questions as we go along. Um, but Amal, I, I thought we could just go back, as I mentioned earlier, to start way back, seven years or more back. Can you tell tell us wh what appear, appealed to you about film and storytelling in particular? Um, when I first started uh, kind of looking at film seriously was uh, at a kind of turning point in my life where I was kind of you know, going into adulthood, I, you know, in high school, you're encouraged to think about the future and, and what you want to do uh, and what you want to be. Uh, and at that point, honestly, I didn't have any idea what it was that I wanted to do. And I kind of stumbled upon film by accident. I started making films uh, and I found in film a sort of really beautiful way to express ideas, to uh, to share stories, to share um, 
moments and uh, details of everyday life and to bring it, to kind of serve it on a platter for people to understand without having to necessarily understand the language or understand the, the medium itself. It's such an accessible medium. And I think that that just gave me so much liberty uh, in my expression that I did not find in anything else. Yes. And, um, you know, speaking globally for a minute, um, you know, film even more now with advances in technology and based on things that we're going to talk about today, it's very easy for like the people listening to us now. It's very easy for anyone to make a film now, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I want to just share some images um, when when Amal first came to see us at Doha Film Institute seven years ago. Um, she'd been experimenting with, with a small camera. Uh, it, the share screen isn't working. Hold on, let, let me just refresh this one second. I, I'll, I'll share the story. What happened was that in high school, I was kind of intrigued by film. And I came up with a story that was inspired by my grandma's tales myths and um, superstitions and kind of, you know, very imaginative tales from the region. And uh, I really wanted to make this film happen. I had little to no experience. I had my this? What's that? Can you see this screen? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So can um, you talk us through, this was the first image I saw from you back in 2013, isn't it? What were you trying to do with this? So I had this idea and I really wanted to make it happen. Like I could not sleep at night. Uh, and I was like, okay, let me just gather up some kids from the from Al Wakra. Let me gather up my cousins and let's create an um, impromptu kind of like film crew. And we shot something. And then I realized like, I have all these people here and all this equipment that I borrowed from the school and, but I didn't know how to make a film. And so that's when I went to you, Ben, with the, with the CD. Yeah. Now, what I was, I mean, I don't know what, what you all think out there, but when I first saw these images, I was astounded. I mean, you were, how, how old were you when you brought this tape in? I think you were like 15. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the, the, the point that I was going to make is that when I saw these images, and something that I really want us to share with the people watching today is look how beautifully these look at look at that image, for example, the composition, the symmetry of the image is very, very appealing to the eye. And I think that, you know, with a little bit of study, um, which is something that we try and do a lot of at DFI, studying visual storytelling, I mean, did you just do this naturally or were you a big film fan? I mean, how did you put these, you knew the basics of filmmaking at this point or? I, I watched a lot of movies and I watched a lot of popcorn movies actually. But I remember there was a summer, uh, like um, summer course in, in the university I studied at, Northwestern. Uh, and they had, they opened my eyes to international cinema and, and art house and, and these kinds of films, and that really inspired me and kind of in, in kind of like pursuing film because they looked at not just as something that's just for pure entertainment. Film became a vehicle for archive. Film became a vehicle for kind of a medium for people to express their, their, uh, their thoughts and opinions about, you know, important issues. Um, and it's more than that film can be so adaptable to the individual that's that's making it that it's just it has so much potential yeah and so we we were sitting there and i was looking at this and you were telling me these stories that you had in mind and for the people watching us um just just in a in, if you could it's almost impossible but if you could describe or give a little bit of early advice at this point in the workshop if you have a small idea in your head, what is your recommendation, your advice of how do you develop an idea? I'm when talking about like, if someone was to make their very first short film like you. 
what what would you encourage them to think about first i think um in ter- like i would like to compare having an idea and turning it into a film to kneading a dough to uh, to making bread uh i've been baking a lot clearly <laughs> but basically you have this you have these ingredients you have these ideas and they're kind of like maybe not related and and they're kind of all over the place so you try to bring them together and then you you try to explore them and you you give them time to to mature and to um, to, to and for you to also understand why you're doing it and and to fall in love with the idea more and and you know to to just honestly let it kind of evolve organically um yeah i would also add to that um the idea of a theme right so it, you have a central theme uh, at the middle of this idea right so for example just skipping forwards after we looked at this i mean this was the um, this was the develop the, the test shoot for your film shahab am i oh, correct yeah, yeah. this which, is very early draft like yeah which um you are all going to watch at the end of the workshop and i'm very excited for you all to see that now um I'm now going to go into uh, this. This is the first film you made with us, isn't it? Yes. This is Alcora, and this was the this was the okay. So it was the 12th of October, 2013. It says there on the clapperboard, and um, basically this was a, a film that we shot in one day. And you wrote it in one week. Is that correct? Do you, do you want to tell us a little bit about Alcora and, and how this allowed you to take your storytelling forwards? Yeah. So I think what hap- how, d- how it started was that in the meeting when I was with you, I was like, Ben, I have this idea and it's like a huge idea. And I, I just, it's so big and I need your support and all of that. And you're like, Emel, you know, you, re- you need to reel it back in and you need to kind of, uh, you know, we need to get you to a point where you can make this film to the best of your ability. And and uh, and I remember you were like, you, you need to do these workshops. And one of these workshops was the seven day filmmaking challenge, which essentially is the bare bones of making films. It's just literally having a camera, a mic, a script and as minimal of a crew and and as little of actors as you need. Yeah. Um, if you take yeah. one person out of the crew, it's just gonna fall apart. <laughs> so that that's how kind of important everyone yeah. was. And actually, uh, what I think is really sweet is if you look at your crew here, um, the, there's three three brothers. They're three uh, amazing kids from India um, yeah. who are still making films now and I still bump into them. Um, so there's th- and that none of them were over the age of 16. And then holding the microphone here is uh, Uma, who used to, uh, also another Indian guy who used to come with me on all my shoots. Um, and he's still making films as well. And that was really your crew right there, wasn't yeah. it? And the cinematographer, which I don't and think you- Cinematographer, mean. yes. <laughs> He's like, he's actually a photographer. So, and the location was just this abandoned village. And we just kind of wanted to make the most out of as little as we can. I think that was the the point, which is not to kind of look at filmmaking as like, oh, Hollywood's and lights and action and, you know, but more, almost like really kind of bring it back to to a point where it's just the basics. And here, here you can see these are some uh, frame grabs. I'm going to post the link to the film in the message box in a minute uh, so you can see it. But here are some of the frame grabs. And I, I would say to everyone watching, you know, if you, you want to know how do you make a film in eight hours, which is really how long it took, right? Because yeah. almost no one does that anymore. Um, basically, how did, how did we do this, Jamal? I mean... You could talk about the shot list. You could talk about the fact that you knew exactly what you wanted. And yeah, just talk us through the, the very basics of how, how, how do you make a film in eight hours? Um, well, I think it, it 
comes down to the script first and foremost. Um, if you have a simple script that's not overly complicated, you know, that doesn't have extra unnecessary things, when you go on set, you're going to have much more focus. Now, because your script is focused, so it starts there, and that's already we're at zero budget. No, we're not spending anything by having to work on a script. It's it's basic. You can do it on your own, or with a, a you know help of a friend. So then, at, when you have the script going on before going on set, you need to run it through a couple of uh, rehearsals or try to you know dissect it, try to understand visually what is it that you want walking through the, the script visually is different than reading it. Uh, I had to go to the script being able, like I literally had, you know, memorized the script at that point and I also had memorized it visually. So I knew what the actors were going to say and at the same time I knew what, the, uh, what I needed to get visually from the camera person. And, um, you know, just knowing your your material and going on set, you can, at that point, you can throw everything away if you really wanted to, and you can kind of let the set speak to you and and see what's, what works, what doesn't. You know, you might want a, a blue door, uh, but you show up to the location and it's a purple door. And at that point, you need to kind of, you know, go with the flow, roll with the punches, and make the most out of the, out of the situation. At, you know, when you're on set, uh, it's about making decisions and problem solving. Yeah, um, I remember you did that so well. I mean, we were literally racing against the sun going down yeah. um, and we got it all done. Just to take two steps back before we move on to your next film. Um, I think it's of special interest to our viewers that this film deals with a set of themes that are recurring in your films, which make you as a filmmaker very uh, relevant to this conference. Um, could you tell us a little bit about some of the themes? Like you can see this picture of our young female character here. There's a collective tissue in your some of your work and some themes that you explore um, that I think would be particularly interesting in terms of youth empowerment right and gender absolutely i think for me film is autobiographical it always comes from within even if it's a story about a character who's not me it's still inspired by what i care about and what i am going through and what i'm trying to go through so one of the things that was for me kind of what i was going through at that time was as a woman now that i'm kind of you know, growing up and going into adulthood, all of a sudden there was this shift in my, um, you know, in the way we have to conduct ourselves in the society, in the house and, you know, with other people, with guys, with, you know. So I just, um, coming from that, I kind of like really wanted to make, you know, have a story that was close to me, that some, it's inspired by something that I went through, but at the same time, it could be understood by anyone who's watching it, not necessarily someone who speaks Arabic. Anyone who watches this kid and this boy would understand. And, and, and I the storyline is basic. Can you describe the storyline in, in like a sentence? And then, sorry to interrupt, but just, just so they know what the basic premise of this story is. Uh, it's about a girl. Oh my God, I, I haven't watched it in so long. Oh. I can help out if you want. It's basically from my perspective, and um, I don't like to, you know, jump in like that, but it's basically about a girl who wants to play football with her brother, right? Yes. Yeah. But, dot, dot, dot. But. But she can't because obviously, you know, she's a girl. And I, I went through that as a child. I love to play football and whenever I would be like, go to my cousins and I would be like, please, can I play football with you? They would always put me as a goalkeeper. <laughs> and it just like, I was never, you know, that wasn't even playing football because all I did was stand there and wait for the ball to be shot in my face. 
So from that kind of anecdote, uh, there, there are different layers uh, to dissect and for people to kind of see and, and understand what is it that I'm trying to um, express and what is it that I'm trying to kind of understand also for myself. Yeah. Um, these are the same boys that we grew up with, but now all of a sudden, you know, it's different. Um, so yeah, this is that's interesting um, in terms of, you know, one of the things that I know that the United Nations resolutions talk about um, is inclusion and sort of gender equality. So I think this is an important time to say that I think, Amal, you and I and people at DFI, we share the belief that in filmmaking, it's we don't want to tell people what to think, right? No. It's, it's not about telling you, it's not an advert. It's not a, a PSA, a public service announcement. It's something more elegant than that, right? So you're exploring a theme rather than telling people what to think. Is that is that correct? Yes, and this is uh, one of the things that we had trouble with, uh, or you know, when whenever we're kind of working on a film, people would say, "What is the message?" Yes, um, it almost felt like we had to highlight the message and put, you know, underline it and and put it there in bold for everyone to see. When when really what it needs is just to be kind of subtly there for people to understand it. And people are not, your audience don't want to think that they're you know, they don't like it when you make them feel like they're stupid. People yeah. watching your film can understand it, whether or not I, you know, um, you know, have the message, you know, you know, that obvious and that kind of in their face. So, so this is what, uh, this is what appeals to me when it comes to autobiographical uh, stories and stuff that I've been through is it's that obviously when you dissect it, when you go to the core of it, there is a, a topic, a theme, an issue, but it's or a message, but it's not the message that kind of uh, takes over the yes. whole. And I think that's important for our viewers to, um, you know, if you want to be a filmmaker that whose films play at festivals, uh, the international, you know, cultural standards of filmmaking, people don't want advertisements or public service announcements. They want elegant, poetic stories. And on that note, we'll kind of move, because we actually don't have that much time if we want to show Shahab. Um, I want to talk about Smeetja. Can you tell us, as I go through the uh, slides here, what was the, um, what was the development? What was your development in terms of theme and as a filmmaker, as a storyteller? Because it's also a story about a young woman as well. So I'll, tell us about Smeetja. You are on set. So at that time, obviously, a couple of years have passed. I have more of a formal education. I didn't go to film school, but I did, you know, my degree has some sort of kind of film elements to it. Um, um, so what, had, what was happening at the time was that my grandfather was um, on his deathbed, Allah uh, and he, and I just didn't know how to, understand it i didn't know how to comprehend it uh and i remember that uh one of the i was i was recording my grandfather when he was in hospital and just that image sparked so many different ideas uh for smicha and and i just wanted to make this kind of tribute to him it's not a film about um you know him specifically it's not you know the main character is not him it's he's inspired by him um he has a different diagnosis he has a different condition and um and in that way it becomes universal for everyone to understand and the little girl in a way you know she shares my kind of longing and and wanting to understand what's going uh what you know trying to understand death uh you know yes yeah and and it's a it's a beautiful film and again i will uh share the link um so that you can watch it it's, it is online everyone so i would encourage you to see this very beautiful film and again you're exploring um society and you know 
interpersonal relationships in a very with a very light hand aren't you you know it's it's, it's all about these small moments of togetherness family and if we talk about some of the principles of this conference about nation building um you know nation building can be on the big scale how do we build a nation but it can also be how do we exist within a family right like that's yeah. part of the nation um and i i was i feel that you gave us a really a very privileged you gave us a a, a peek behind the doors of the Cattery family that i felt very genuine so so thank you for that um, um what one of the things that we also care about as filmmakers is is sharing you know st sharing a film um that's you know that's close to to the, the qatari society not just qataris locals everyone who's living in qatar everyone who's been to qatar when they when they see these kind of films it's different than always having to watch kind of foreign films because now you're seeing yourself on yeah um, and this is part of nation building this you know this is contributing to the voice of the nation it's contributing to uh, other people's understanding of what Qatar is, what you know, because this is what media is about. This is why it's so powerful. I think this is you've hit on the probably the most important thing that we can say today. Actually, is that sense of you know, um, I know that there's a, there's an organ a wonderful organization in Uganda called Maishna, run by the Indian filmmaker Mira Naya, who who, who grew up in Uganda and. She, her catchphrase is, if we don't tell our stories, no one else will. Yeah. So part of the part of film's role in nation building is not only as with our film festivals, is, is giving the young people the analytical skills to uh, interpret film and storytelling on a deeper level, but it's then to take those visual tools and make their own stories, which is incredibly empowering, right? Yeah, so I was just saying that, you know, to be able to tell one's own stories is an incredibly empowering uh, tool to have, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the questions here. Oh, yes. Seems to be... Sorry with that, Ben. Yeah, go ahead. Pick pick some of the questions, please. Go I, ahead. I'm looking at there is a few recurring questions about you know media for you know using media to for peace, and I've worked on a couple of documentaries that uh, stem from you know conflicts um, or stem from uh, you know an issue that's uh, happening. One of one of my first documentaries was about the Hamalis in Sugwagif. And uh, I wanted to kind of share their perspective and, and to, to, to help people kind of see them in a different light. They, you know, they, they didn't have that much uh, pay. And, and, you know, what matters here, what I'm trying to say is that if you want um, to make films that have an impact, uh, forget about the impact. Focus on the story. Focus on why the story matters to you. And then that, and then there's going to be impact. Focus on the person that's sitting in front of you. Connect with them, uh, and then you're going to have an impact. I also made a film uh, about um, a Syrian lady who lives in a refugee camp, and you know, going to this refugee camp. I did not want to make just another film that's just about you know the living situation um, of people in, in Syria. No, I, I wanted this film to, to, I wanted people to connect to her in a different way, to see her as a human, instead of seeing her through these filters of news and, you know, and all of that. So I really got to know her as a person. I got to sit down with her, with her family, with her kids, and I got to know her. And from there, I really wanted to, to make a film that's about her. And and that's kind of my advice. If if you you know, if you want to make films that kind of address issues, just focus on the story. Don't think about the the impact or the the glory that this film's gonna have. Absolutely, absolutely. And perhaps I you know we have a couple of couple of questions here about um, 
can you tell us about some more practical filmmaking uh, things? We're talking about, um, let's take drama, for example. So how do you, you know, you're, you're working with a camera uh, operator, cinematographer, you're working with actors, and around you are maybe up to 50 other people. Can you, yeah. can you share with the, with the people here a little bit about the, the day in the life of a director? What kind of skills do you have to have, um, you know, if you wanted to, to make a film? Um, I think when it comes to being on set, it really all comes down to being confident in your vision and the story that you're going to do and, and just, you know, uh, kind of, you know, performing that uh, confidence. I've been on a set, Shab, the film you're going to watch, where I was probably, you know, one of the youngest people on set. I was a director, but I had some people on the set who had more experience than my my actual age. Uh, people who, you know, are much older than me. Um, and in the end of, you know, but you know, what it comes down to is is walking on set, knowing what you want, and directing people because that's what, what I need to do. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it, can, you, can you see this image here? Yeah. So, so tell us about, tell us about uh, first of all, tell us, because we're about to watch your film. Um, tell us a little bit about the story in a, in, a, in a nutshell, and then take us behind the scenes because this was a very, very difficult film to make, wasn't yeah. it, for all of us, in terms of the heat, the long hours. So first of all, what is Shahab about and how does it tie in with the themes of youth empowerment and the, this recurring female central character? Yeah, Shahab is about essentially this girl who wants to aim for the impossible. She heard about this kind of myth of falling stars and and she was and she kind of was like I want to I want to go after the stars I want to you know do what wasn't done um, and so she embarks on this journey where in this village where it was very much um, kind of reliant on the male uh, you know the male uh, and so she was trying to navigate that and trying to find her you know, her authority and her independence in that uh, context. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and um, you know, there was about 50 people on set and uh, we were working about 15 hours a day. Um, if, if, as, because we're <clears throat> running out of time a bit, this, this is, in the scheme of your career, this took you know, several years to get to this level, didn't it? Where, I mean, you know, you can see, you can see this giant artificial moonlight that we have as dozens of people everywhere. This doesn't, this isn't the first film for anyone, right? No way, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, even going into that, I, I was absolutely kind of just blown off, uh, you know, just, blown away by the 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 the, um, the importance of this shoot and how big it was uh i think i could have had much like a bit more you know leading up to this film but you know it was just it, it was like someone threw me threw me in the in the the large water and now i had to kind of learn how to swim and that was really a kind of and really awarding experience, Ben. I and mean, you were, you were there the whole time. And both you and I learned so much. Oh, well, we learned so much. And in particular, I want to draw our workshop attendants' attention to these images. Um, what happened here, Amal? <laughs> what what exactly happened here at toward the end of the shoot? This was a uh, we didn't none of us expected this, did we? Yeah, so we were like, we want to make this film about this girl that gets on a boat and she she kind of goes away and we show up in this location and there was no sea. I mean, the sea was there, but it had gone like all the way back, like almost a kilometer back and we couldn't walk to the sea. It was way too far. 
there were crabs biting our feet and it was just like not ideal and we had to think you know on the on our on our feet and and try to you know problem solve and and troubleshoot and we found this i think ben you had some for some reason you had yeah. like this green screen and yeah, it, was about, it. it was about two o'clock in the morning yeah and we were sat there and the sea was running away from us and it's quite ironic really because um the sea is actually uh the thing that she's trying to get to right yes and we couldn't get to it because the sea the tide was going out yeah. and so when you see the film um you'll see that the end the the sea is actually uh di a digital effect um and you'll see that this was a problem that we had to overcome now i'm just going to Sorry to uh, break away, but because we've got time for a couple of last questions. Um, I've got a question here from Tarek Al-Bakri. Question, what makes you continue doing what you do as a filmmaker? You obviously started quite young, quite early. Why do you want to do it as a career, Amal? Asks Tarek. I think for me, there's just a lot of freedom in making films. Uh, it's not an office job. It will never be. And whenever every film I'm working on is a completely different film. I'm, I'm right now. I'm working on a film um, that's a documentary, and and it's just a completely different, you know, vibe from from Shab. Uh, and I just enjoy that kind of process of creating worlds and building something out of nothing. Um, and I think. I think it's about time we watch films that are made by ourselves. I mean, we're so used to watching films from Hollywood and and other industries, and we rarely see films about ourselves. And I think it's film plays a crucial element in, in addressing social issues. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of potential there. Absolutely. Does anyone have any final questions before we screen Shahab? Well, I mean, I would just say, while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, that I think I speak for Amal as well, and I say that we both encourage you, wherever you are on earth, to consider telling your own story, to consider looking at your life or the society around you, and having the courage to open a small notepad and write down the things that interest you, things that you would like to change about your society, things that upset you or bother you and really try and make a very simple story just two or three minutes long use a phone use a simple camera editing software is is freely available on computers or in schools or you know if you want to do it you, you will find it you will find the software you will find a camera do you want to add anything to that amal um i mean i think more than ever you have uh, all the opportunity right now to be making films and uh, for for no cost and even no experience because you can learn things online, uh, you know, without having to go to film school. Um, you have a platform, you have the equipment. It's right, it's it's there in your hands. You don't need anything fancy, and you can make it work. All you need really is a good idea. Yes, yes. And Cameron Safdar says, Ben, my question is. Uh, behalf, um, how can people get involved with your upcoming projects, and how can I help? How can we help in transformation? Trans, uh, doing the same thing we did for Amal. Well, um, if you're in Doha, we run workshops uh, year round. If you're not, I would, as Amal said, you know, and it, the internet is a very rich resource. If you want to learn the, the, the skills. Um, there are many uh, tutorials, platforms. The only thing really holding you back is yourself. Um, it sounds cheesy. It sounds like something, you know, like very easy to say. But all you need is a very simple idea. And as Tarek al Bakri says, a good idea plus passion. And, you know, this is what Amal came through the doors in 2013 with a uh, good idea, passion, and dedication for hard work. I mean, it's very hard work, isn't it, Amal? It is. <laughs> so um, 
on that note, I mean, we could talk for much longer. I hope I've given, I hope Amal and myself and Abdullah have given you a, a small taste of um, some of the themes, some of the ways that we can empower ourselves around the world with simple tools and software to tell our own stories. Um, and so uh, if the technical team would like to run Shahab, um, you can sit back, enjoy the film. And um, I'm not sure how this will exactly play out, but let's see if it starts playing. Thank you, everyone. I just want to say it's been a pleasure and I hope, really hope you enjoy Shahab. If you want to share anything, uh, you can get in contact with me on my social, ml.almuftah, or just share it to DFI's Instagram and, and yeah, yeah, enjoy. And if, if you want to email me, it's brobinson at dohafilminstitute.com. Um, I don't know if the film's about to start. It's a beautiful film and it really deals with a lot of the themes of empowerment, in, uh, exclusion, gender politics. Um, so enjoy the film, everyone. And you can find us with a little bit of searching. We're out there. Okay. And over to the technical team. I presume it will start any second. <laughs> and before it does, I'm very happy. Lovely messages coming through. Thank you, Abdul Karim. Thank you, Deborah. Um, thank you, Abdullah, for joining us. Thank you, Cameron, Tarek, uh, Hale, Tin Tinuola. Sorry, I didn't pronounce that very well. Are we screening now? Uh, Hale asks, what are the best platforms for Arabic short films, especially those that are not the popcorn type? Well, we have the Ajal Film Festival, and um, you can submit your film to us there. Um, there are, there are festivals that are actually, they're, on, they're moving online now because of COVID. Like the Toronto Film Festival, the Toronto Arab Film Festival, Shab is going to be there. And I'm sure there's a selection of other good uh, Arab films. Yeah, and actually, if you go to um, filmfreeway.com, um, you will find, and just type in Arab Short Film Festival or Arab Film Festival, you'll find almost 100 festivals um, online. Um, there are some new platforms springing up. There's one called Alchemia on, on Amazon which is a kind of uh, Arab film streaming platform. Um, but yeah, I mean, Google is your friend when it comes to that. Uh, any final questions? Oh, oh, here we go. I'm being told, I'm being given instructions, everyone. When I press end, our Shahab will begin. So, final oh, okay. from Amal. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the film. It's a very beautiful film. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, here we go.
شوفي شو شو يبا قومي يلا ساعديني قومي لا ما بي رح تجي تكون خايسة بعدين لين كبرتي شلون بتطبخين حق زوجك ها؟ من بيسوي الاكل؟ هو بيطبخ حق نفسه كم يوم شفت واحدة وأنا راجع من بيت محسن وطبت في بحر الوكرة راسك سيدة يما يمكن راحت ورا البحر يمكن غرقت وصارت لولو ما يندرى بخر ما لش دخل انت سيرش بس في البحر يا يوبا ما بيسع الكلام سلطان يلا يوبا ما يطالع فيكم البارحة؟
انا محذق اكثر من مره ما تطلع اخر مره تطلع سمعت ولا لا يلا قوموا شل الفرش سلطان سلطان قوم النجمة طاحت سلطان تعال معي خل نروح نجيب النجمة لو سمحت
We trust that you enjoyed your last Be Empowered 2020 workshop and that you've learned new knowledge, skills and attitudes around our conference theme of youth mobilization for inclusion, peace and security. We hope that you feel informed, inspired and even empowered. We're almost at the end of an incredibly engaging and empowering five-day program of webinars, town halls, keynote speeches and workshops. We'll take a quick 15 minute break, but please come back for our closing ceremony that will wrap up the outcome for the Be Empowered 2020 conference. The session can be accessed on the keynote tab on your dashboard. And as always, don't forget to share your thoughts about the conference using the Empower 2020 hashtag. See you soon.